There's a strange wanderer near Wolfendom. Letting grave names echo! Yeah, no, my sword! Ring cutter! Nice and spicy! Hey, yeah! Boom, boom!
life is mine. Drop the pump. Scatter! Everybody stand back! Submit! I can do it. Oh, I can't. I can do it. Oh, I. Ahem. It's fine. I can definitely do it. Right. Just what will we come across this time? <sighs> Don't tell me they did it again.
Navigating the world is a whole lot easier with a few different identities to choose. See, thank you so much. The Adventurous Guild has been overwhelmed these days. <laughs> no worries at all. We've always valued the strength of adventurers. Given the current situation, it's vital that we all work together. Since we're facing the same enemies, I'll send you the intel we've collected on the Abyss so far. Then we can take a look at how to coordinate our efforts. All right, thank you so much. You two have come just in time. I've got some good news. The Pyro Archon has finished assembling her forces and stationed them all across Natlan. Given how the Abyss has ramped up its activities lately, we can no longer afford to act only after receiving news of an invasion. So the Pyro Archon suggested that the Scions of the Canopy and the Adventurers Guild focus on collecting and disseminating intel. That way, we can stay informed of everything that's happening across the land. Once we receive word of enemy activity, we can notify the nearest camp and the stationed forces can take immediate action. Yes, precisely. This should also allow us to focus on gathering information, rather than running around and trying to tackle everything at once. So please also take a chance to relax, you two. You've been working hard these days, and this will be a good opportunity for some well-deserved rest. So that's the plan! Whew, we can finally stop and take a break! Paimon knows that! It's not like Paimon just wanted to lay here and do nothing! <laughs> the movements of the Abyss are always unpredictable. There have also been times when it suddenly became more active in the past. The people here generally see it as something like an acute natural disaster. Once the disaster is over, everyone will return to their normal lives. We just all hope that day will be sooner rather than later. Oh, right. Most people have no idea just how bad the situation has gotten in the Night Kingdom. Oh, hey, Kachina! Are you feeling better now?
names! Paimon still can't believe anyone could forge those things. yourself, Kachina. After all, you're already a victor of the Night Warden Wars. Ah, yes, so I've heard. So young, and yet you've already got quite the reputation. Wait, are, are you Outlanders? Yep, we're travelers who just arrived in Natland not too long ago. No, I, I mean, I was aware that you're travelers. It's just no one told me that you're Outlanders. No, the only thing she said is that a new hero had pledged herself to the plan, but... We need to forge an ancient name to ensure she'd be able to return safe and sound. And she did mention that it would be quite difficult to forge an ancient name for them, but at the time, I thought she was just commenting on my skills. But I seem to understand where the uh, true difficulty lies now. <sighs> oh, I, I wouldn't go that far. I'm used to it, really. I just huh, need a moment to process things. The Pyro Archon's requests are always difficult to fulfill, and uh, we used to argue a lot. Honestly, it's uh, probably for the better that she didn't bring this up at the time. <sighs> anyway, I can't argue with her if she isn't here, and it'd be pointless to take my anger out on someone else. But, whew, just because I understand her rationale doesn't make me any less upset, after all. She must have known that forging an ancient name for an outlander is an impossible task. It's impossible? As you probably know, an ancient name is a symbol of a hero's sparing glory, which grows even richer and heavier as generations of successors inherit it. We forge ancient names by engraving the heroic deeds of an individual who will become the first hero of that particular name.
But they were all performed outside of Natlan, correct? Yeah, that's right. Then those deeds haven't been recorded by the Night Kingdom. To take it one step further, even if you had performed heroic deeds in Natlan, as an outlander, your actions still wouldn't have been recorded by our lands. Only memories and experiences that have been acknowledged by the Wild can be used as a basis for an ancient name. Even the greatest of craftsmen cannot create something out of thin air, you know. That's just how it is. Seems the Wyab don't want just anyone to get a name, huh? Mawika, of all people, should know better than anyone. Yet she still entrusted the task of forging the ancient name to me. Oh, Paimon gets it. Nobody's happy being asked to do the impossible. Ugh, don't remind me. Let's just, uh, focus on how we can pull this off. How to achieve the impossible. Uh, you mean you're already willing to accept the task? Well, what else can I do? What's happened is already done, and it's not like I can outright defy the order of my Archon. If she gave me this order, then she believes the ancient name is an indispensable part of her plan, and that I'll be able to find a way to make it happen. In other words, the Order is an affirmation of my abilities. Oh, not only has she accepted the task, but now she's looking for silver linings? The key is getting the Wyab to somehow acknowledge the Traveler's existence and record her heroic deeds. We heard the voice of a Wyab when we were in the Night Kingdom before. We even had a whole conversation with her. If we can talk to her again, maybe we can figure something out together. Well, every tribe has their own Wyab. How do we know if the one you met is indeed the best one for us to talk to? Plus, considering the unprecedented nature of this situation, I have a feeling that the acknowledgement of one Wyab alone would probably not be enough. <sighs> I don't know. That requires a level of knowledge that I do not possess. We need to find a consultant who's an expert on all things Night Kingdom and Wyab. The first person who comes to mind is Seat Lolly at the Masters of the Nightwind. The one we call Granny Eats Tali. Oh, we've heard that name before. We used her spirit speaker stone to find Kachina's ancient name. A person who can make something like that must be pretty impressive. I'm unsure she'd be able to help. Uh, still, she's older now and quite eccentric. It's hard to even book a meeting with her, given that she's constantly holed up in a room and doesn't like to be disturbed. I've heard that to get her help, you have to be extremely patient with her and know how to keep her spirit up. I hate to break it to you, but... Huh. Why is that? I mean, didn't she already help you before? And you even managed to save Kachina. Well, yeah. At the cost of her spirit speaker stone being split into two. <sighs> Great going, Moika. We're already off to a rocky start here. In that case, I guess your only option is to try to emphasize that this is an important order from the Pyro Archon. Hopefully, Seat Lolly would still want to show respect to the Archon. I'll also write you a letter on your behalf. If you can find someone to deliver it and mention some good things about you, then that should help too. I'm unsure hopes a Hal won't interrupt when he's talking, though. All right, Kanich is a seasoned negotiator. I trust that he'll know the best things to say. Uh, please just give me a moment to write the letter. And we can meet up near the Statue of the Seven later. Sounds good! We'll take a stroll in the meantime.
I'm sorry to put this on you, Kanich. It's just that you're probably the only person who knows how to deal with her. Oh, wait, so Kachina and the Traveler also know about the plan? <laughs> well, then I suppose there's no need to keep any secrets between us. Having companions walk by your side is perhaps the best solace when facing such a bleak reality. Given how the Masters of the Nightwind love to babble about dreams and revelations, they're already a pretty strange bunch to most. I've never met Auroran, but if they consider him the odd one, he's got to be pretty far out there. Huh. Makes sense. But Paimon wonders how Seat Lolly could be the first one to notice Auroran's disappearance if she spends the whole day in her room. Oh, so if I'm following, you mean we'll help her investigate Roron and the captain's whereabouts? Yeah! Plus, we kind of owe her one anyway to make up for breaking the spirit speakers down. Ah, this is a pretty well thought out plan. As expected of Molly Poe Nietzsche. Then, uh, yeah, I'll leave my letter to you. Let's hope Seat Lolly can meet at the stadium in two days. Okay, then let's part ways for now. I'll see you in a couple of days.
かあ,あ,あ,あ Cry. <laughs> 